everyone, Sean Frangel here with a new After Effects tutorial about how we can connect optical flares to Element 3D animations. So here we have this render where there's a 3D object created in Element 3D and there are some optical flares exactly tracking and lining up to it and following the camera movement. And if we take a look at our After Effects project, here we have the final file that we could take a look at from a couple different views if we want to see what's going on. And what we have here is our Element 3D logo and our camera moving around and we can see here we're generating some nulls out of Element 3D and lining up and snapping lights to where those are and then even getting into some things like using depth passes if we had another one that we wanted to sit in this little back part and be blocked out by the front of the logo. So let's get started on how to set this up. It's some quick and easy tips and you can really do some cool stuff if you get this lined up. So I'll just quickly delete all this other stuff besides Element 3D. And if I take a look in my Element 3D scene setup, I have this quick little 3D logo that I've created out of some shapes and vector assets. And if you want to get a quick refresher on how to create something like a 3D logo in Element 3D version 2, or some other quick tips on working with Element 3D and some of the updates like shadows and reflections that are in version 2, as well as how to bring Cinema 4D models in and all sorts of Element 3D stuff, you can check out some of my other tutorials on how to get up to speed with creating something like this and getting our animation in. But if you already have this or a 3D object and you just want to skip to how to connect optical flares to this, let's get to the point. So here we have our object and what we need to do is generate some nulls exactly on these points so we can have everything sync up. So what we're going to do is go to utilities and this top one is this generate 3D position null. And what we can do is click this little icon to get our crosshair in whichever window we're working on and just click in 3D where we want this. So I'll click right there on the edge and you can see it's going to change those numbers. And if we need to pan the camera around, you could do that and then just again, click where you want it and it's going to update that. And then you want to click generate. And down here, we can see it's gonna generate a 3D null that is exactly on that position. And if we pan our camera around now, we can see it's going to line up with that. So if we wanna get another one, we'll just go back to element 3D, update that select 2D position setting. So I'll click that and again, click generate. And there, now I have my second null. Now this will work great if we have camera movement, but if we had this whole object moving, let's say we go to our group, and move this, you can see they don't line up. So if you're doing that and you wanna be able to twist this thing around and move it too, one thing you wanna do is go to whichever group you have the 3D elements in it and go to create group null and click create. And what that's gonna do is create this group null and add a bunch of expressions on our element 3D layer so that rather than moving our group XYZ position up here on the effect, we can actually just move it here and it will automatically move and rotate that object. So if we wanna bring the flares along with that, all we gotta do is take these two element position nulls we created, parent those to this group null, and there we go. Now, if we move this or rotate it, it's all gonna follow along and that's great. So now we need to get some optical flares in here. That's the fun stuff. So let's do that by going to layer new solid and I'll call this flares. And I'm going to go over to my effects, which it looks like are hidden way down here. I'm going to get optical flares, drop that on, and I'll just go into options and set up a quick one. I'm not concerned too much with what it looks like. I mainly want to talk about how to get everything set up. And I'll go to OK. And then we have that on top of our scene. So what we want to do is change our render mode from on black to on transparent. And we don't just want one. 2D flare, we want to be able to have multiple 3D flares. So what we want to do is change the source type to track lights, but we don't have any lights in here yet. So that's what we're going to do to get this to work. We're going to create a couple of lights and then snap them to where these nulls are that we made. So I'm going to go to layer new light and I can create a point light and we could even have it control the color. So I'll go to light one. Okay. And then you can see that's not quite lining up with anything. So what we can do is grab our light and not just parent it because that's just gonna keep it where it is. But if we hold shift and parent it, it's gonna snap it to where that null is and parent it. And now we can see it follows that around. So if we rotate our camera, it lines up. If we grab our 
group positional and move our object it lines up and that's great so we could do the same thing with the second one i'll just duplicate that light move it up in the stack and same thing shift parent it to our element position null number two and it's going to snap over there and then we could even change our light color and it's going to update that and if we want this to blend a little better we can go to our flares layer and change this to something like add or screen and it's going to blend those together and there we have the first main part so for most situations that should get you to where you need to be now we can move our camera around and those exactly line up we can move our object around and rotate it and that's great but let's talk about one really specific little trick you might want to do so let's jump back into our element 3d scene setup and in this scene i have my main logo and then i have this bigger circle so say we wanted to have one right over here on the edge. Well, if this is turning, then it would eventually get blocked. So let's say we're doing that. Let's quickly turn these off so we don't have any flares. And we can do that same thing to get it there. Let's say we want it here. So we can go down to our Utilities tab, click Select 2D Position, click right here, Generate. There we have our new Null. And same thing, I'll just duplicate one of those old lights, put it up here just to keep track of it, turn it on, shift parent it over, and now it's lining up there. But again, if, if we rotate around, because optical flares, it's still just a 2D effect using some parallax to make it look like those elements are moving around. It should be blocked right now, and we can see it kind of floats through the logo, and that's a problem. So how do we fix that? Because it shouldn't be showing up when the camera pulls around. We want to actually kind of tuck that effect within here. Well, the way we can do that is using something like this depth pass, which will take our 3D object layer and project this black and white and gray image so that we can use that as a track mat set to Luma or Luma inverted to block out those elements. So let's set that up. The way we can do that is I'm going to duplicate my whole element 3D layer by pressing Command D, and then I'm going to drag that above my flares layer. So now basically we have two instances. Let's rename this one Depth Pass, and I'll solo that so we can look at just that. And if we go down here to our output at the bottom, by default, it's showing composite, so it's adding all this stuff up. But if we take a look at this, there's some different things you can see in our scene. You can see things like what's in focus, if we were using our camera depth of field here. Different passes like specular, refraction, ambient occlusion. And one additional thing we can use is this Z depth, which is just going to make it white by default. So what we can do is push this start and end depth and overlap them if we want the colors to be inverted and try to find that sweet spot that we can start to see show up where part of our object starts to be white so if we tighten this up a lot we can see now our front panel is starting to be white and we can tweak that to where we're just catching that front edge so if we pan the camera around you can see only that front part is showing up as white and just tweak that tighten that up or loosen it as we need to now what we can do with this depth pass is again put it above our flares layer and then on our flares layer we're going to set it to track map mode luma inverted and what that's going to do is shut off this depth pass layer use it as a luma inverted track mat so whatever is white will be blocked out and gray will be partially blocked out. So now if we rotate our camera around, we can see that our flare is actually tucked in there. And if we need to make any adjustments on that, we can see it's getting cut off a bit. We could just pull those Z depth start and end points and just check that again. And if we need to really push that, we could get something like the exposure effect or curves, put that below our whole element 3d layer on that depth pass and then we could really turn up our exposure if we need to blow that out completely and again just tweak those numbers for start and end depth to get that to line up so now if we rotate this around we can see 
it actually gets blocked or occluded by this front one and it looks like it gets shut off. So you can do some pretty fun stuff with linking optical flares to Element 3D layers. You can even get a little advanced by using something like this depth pass. And it can be really cool to kind of connect all of these different plugins. And if you want to learn more about working with 3D and After Effects using Element 3D or Cinema 4D or how to do the same idea with Cinema 4D scenes, you can check out some of my other tutorials by clicking any of those thumbnails where it will go over working in Element 3D, working in Cinema 4D, all sorts of After Effects tips and tricks to get you doing some cool 3D animation and VFX inside of After Effects, Element 3D, Cinema 4D, or whatever you like to work in. So be sure to check some of those out to keep going and learn some more tips and tricks. And if you wanna get more tutorials, be sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash seanfrangelo where I go over all sorts of additional videos and tips and tricks. I got over a hundred videos, so be sure to subscribe and check those out. And you can hit me up on Twitter if you wanna ask questions, request tutorials, or a talk that way. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.